woman in the sports world is not easy. You have to fight harder to make your way, you struggle more to gain recognition, and you have to defend your beliefs more than any guy would ever have to. But it's really right at the start when it all seems so intimidating, when you first want to take up a sport and you are surrounded by only guys. I often get asked why I think women are less present in the world of action sports, and I think this is exactly the reason. A male-dominated environment does not attract females into a sport. And the fact that the women have such a tiny part in the sport makes the guys an even harder force to break through for any female. I launched KB for Girls in December 2009 because in the many girls camps I had given over the years I started to realize that this vicious cycle can actually be broken, at least for a short time. If you bring together bigger groups of girls, of 20 and even more, and the more the better, then you give those girls the feeling of recognition and acceptance that guys get every time they go to a beach. You create an atmosphere that gives the girls and women a sense of strength and ease that furthers their motivation, courage and self-confidence straight away. In 2010, having been KB for Girls' first season, it was of course a tough struggle. Just as much as when I first started my own career. But it's also been so successful and so amazing for me to see all those happy girls and women around the world. That that has given me just as much strength and motivation as our events have given our participants. And every event has been very special in its own. Our 12 events in 2010 brought us from Augusta in Western Australia and Melbourne in Australia's Victoria to just around the corner on Maui, Hawaii and then all the way to Alguna in Egypt and San Pedro Pescador in Spain. Next up was our event at Sherman Island near San Francisco. Then we jumped back over to Wustrow in Germany and to the Öresund Sound in Sweden before flying all the way back to Hood River in Oregon and Long Island, New York. Event number 11 took us to Lansing in the UK before finishing off the season back in Brisbane, Australia. The event in Augusta, Western Australia was of course super exciting because it was our first event ever and everything depended on a successful clinic. The spot in the river mouth of Augusta was perfect and Fiona Wedenick, one of my good friends from back on the PKA tour in 2002 and 2003, came actually down to help coach all the girls. The enthusiasm of the girls was huge and I will always remember this amazing event as a very special inaugural KB for Girls event. Our KB for Girls event in Melbourne actually took part two days before and then also during the Australian National Championships and we focused on competition coaching more than anything else. Charlotte Simpson and Mel Millen turned out to be the perfect co-trainers for the event since they could both continue a lot to the clinic through their own competition experience. Incredible was the group support that we experienced through the nationals when all the girls from our clinic that did not actually compete themselves ended up being there to support those girls that had entered the competition. 
that certainly was especially motivating. And everyone was super stoked when Michelle England ended up in third and Shannon Ducker in second place of the national championships in freestyle. I'm sitting here waiting for the day to end and I find my guitar my only friend The next event on Maui was completely different again and brought together girls and women with all different interests. In the beautiful setting of Maui's Old Man Beach, we covered and taught many different freestyle moves, but also riding on a surfboard and wave riding techniques, since Maui is such a perfect place to improve in both. With Tomoko Okazaki and Tonya Farman, who both have a lot of experience in teaching female athletes, we had two fabulous instructors join our camp, and all the girls improved a lot. And the amazing safety briefing with Dave from Action Sports Maui was not only extremely important to have before sending the girls out to kite in the strong winds and the deep waters of Maui, but also influenced the safety briefings and structures of all our following KB for Girls events, putting much more emphasis on safety in our sport. Our KB for Girls event in Egypt simply seemed to have it all. With our clinic being part of the Kite Jamboree Festival, our participants also had the chance to enter the fun competitions like freestyle racing, best crash and so on, and they also had a ball at the most amazing beach parties in the evening. Clinic-wise, we were actually challenged at first because the wind was blowing so hard that we could not send the girls out on the water. So we ended up coaching on the simulator and with mental imaging while it was super windy outside. On day two, however, we could not keep the girls back any longer and they all ended up doing an amazing job kiting at over 30 knots. Most impressive for all the girls might just have been Asha Litwin, who was there to help the most advanced riders of our group and then showed off all her crazy handle pass maneuvers in the nuking wind. In Spain we had a ton of fun, especially with all that sangria around. Interesting enough though, most of our participants in this event were not actually Spanish, but flew in from all over Europe. While our few Spanish participants were absolutely lovely girls, it became clear in our conversations with them that in Spain it is even more difficult for females to get into the sport, since cultures and traditions in Spain still see women going into more conservative directions than fun sports. Spain turned out to be crazy in any way though because we did not get any wind in San Pere Pescador. We ended up driving two hours north to Le Cat in the south of France and our trip was rewarded with a fantastic day of kiting there. Anja Zielinska was the pro that joined us for the event and all the girls loved her instructions but also her funny sense of humor, <laughs> as always. Sherman Island and the San Francisco area turned out especially supportive for our KB for Girls event. Not only did we have the full support from our co-pro trainer Sandy Parker from Kytopia, who did an amazing job putting the event together locally, but were also backed up by all the local crew who put together amazing food packages, a barbecue and a great party for us. With the support of five jet skis and boats, we were able to shuttle all of our participants to a spot where we were all by ourselves, no guys around. And there everybody could work on a lot of new tricks before then ending the session in the evening with a super fun downwinder.
Well, this was the first time we actually ran an official KB for Girls event in Wustow, Germany. This is actually the place where it all started. Back in 2003, I organized the first free girls clinic here and have done so every year since. With such a long history, it did not come as a surprise that the Germany event was the one to fill up fastest and the one with the longest waiting list. It was also the only KB for Girls event that was opened up to 50 girls and was supported by five female coaches and various other volunteers. The KB for Girls event in Germany turned out absolutely amazing and we ended up with two days of wind, shallow water and a lot of newly learned tricks but also managed to fit in some wakeboarding, longboarding, supping, a lot of training on land, a TV show and an evening in memory of Silky Gold. A very intense and beautiful event and certainly one to be remembered. A very special thanks would have to go to our amazing coaches Simone Guck, Nina Schumacher, Anne Wattner, Skadi Siegmeier and Heike Wützisk. It was my good friend Anki Knutzen, long-time PKRA judge and passionate kite chick herself, who brought Sweden and the Öresund sound to my attention, and then finally onto the KB for Girls 2010 schedule. An amazing wide open and uncrowded spot, and the back to the roots camping and bonfire atmosphere was perfectly matched by the spirit of the Nordic girls all surely descendants from the Vikings, since really nothing could scare them. Not the cold at night, not the rain on day two, and not the hours of kiting either. And Anki? She did a great job as our guest pro coach as well. With Scandinavia not being as densely populated as the rest of Europe, however, it is even less populated with female kiters. And while we had girls from Norway, Sweden and Denmark join in, we actually hope that we could motivate some more girls in the area to get started with kiteboarding. Our first ever fundraising event, carried the name Dream Extreme, was founded and run in cooperation with amazing Linda Argila and Challenge to Triumph, took part on Long Island, New York, raised money of victims of domestic violence and was an absolutely amazing event and experience. Dream Extreme was also KB4 Girls' first ever beginner clinic and with 20 beginners and 10 advanced kite girls, an extremely expiring group came together. The best conditions possible helped us to get almost all the newbies on the boards and teach the advanced girls some new moves. Through the dinner and dance party with auction in the evening, the kind contributions of our donors, as well as the personal fundraising pages of each of our participants, we managed to raise $155,000 for our cause, which was used to build a legal center for abused women and kids on Long Island. What an amazing achievement and what an honor to be part of. A huge thanks would have to go to all our New York coaches. Laurel Eastman, Sandy Parker, John Pereira, Mike Hart, Fiona Kempton and Idris Daffa, Zach Gottfried, Jake Bourne, Graham Marcus, Peter Richardson, Elia Favon, Carl Giordano, John Modica, Tom Atwell, Rob Govan, and Pavel Biskram. A very special thanks will have to go to our honorary Bonnie Pfeiffer Evans for her extraordinary commitment to victims of domestic violence and of course to Linda Argilla. Yes, we were unlucky with the wind in our UK event. We got up at dawn and drove around until the evening to find wind. And all we found was a light breeze. It was just enough for the on-water demonstration and for the girls to get up the kite for a few minutes. 
being the only event in which we did not actually get to kite, the event in the UK taught us something important though. Even though it is of course the main goal to kite together, it is not the end of the world if we don't. It is completely the opposite in fact. The girls got to bond even more and made friends for life. And the atmosphere was absolutely amazing. The girls still got to learn a lot and left being super motivated and learning new tricks in their very next sessions on the water, which many of them reported to me by email. Andrina Kelly and Laura Price were not only our guest coaches, but also the sweetest girls in the world and helped to make the event just as special as all the other KB4 Girls events. It was in preparation of the first ever PKA World Cup held in Australia that KB for Girls took part at Brighton Beach in Brisbane. A group of very talented female riders who wanted to try their luck in their first international competition came together just one hour north of the PKA World Cup venue and just a couple of days before the World Cup took place. Practicing new tricks and routines for the heats, it was an extremely motivated bunch of girls on the water and everyone was keen to learn as much as possible. It got even more exciting though, when we actually went to the World Cup itself, with a bunch of girls who wanted to compete in the World Cup races, and with Shannon Ducker and Michelle England, who were up for competing in both freestyle and wave competition. Shannon and Michelle ended up doing extremely well, with Shannon ending up ninth in freestyle and Michelle ninth in the wave discipline. Unfortunately, the other girls did not get to try their luck, since no races were run due to the lack of wind. Reflecting on KB4 Girls first season, I feel quite humble by all the things that we managed to achieve this year. In 12 events, we had more than 400 girls involved in our program. However, females in our sport are not even nearly as acknowledged and accepted as males and only very few see the possibilities that lie within female kiteboarding and its appealing message to the general public. We will continue to strive to give females a stronger force and image within kiteboarding with our kb for girls Foundation. And while we are of course stoked to be able to support females in our sport, I strongly believe that it's not only the females out there that we reach out to. It's also all those guys out there that see the girls and all of a sudden go, wow, they can do it, then I can do it too. Thanks very much to all of the supporters that have helped to make KB4 Girls possible in 2010. It wouldn't have been possible without your support. I got a feeling and it's eating me inside. Well, you can run, but you can't hide. I'm not afraid